What is the strangest event you have seen, or been a part of? If you enjoy this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. I've told this story before, but, oh well. I was a junior in high school. I was walking with a friend to our fourth period class when we noticed that the campus was littered with flyers. Which is slightly unusual, sure, but nothing too weird, right? It wasn't until a flyer smacked me in the face that we realized that they were falling from the sky. We looked up and, lo and behold, there's a flying contraption thing. Like a lawn chair strapped to a fan with a paragliding sail. And astride it, circling above our campus, was a man, screaming about the apocalypse and the matrix and abortion. Every few seconds he could reach into his backpack, grab a handful of flyers, and toss them down at the students now congregating in confusion. But the fourth or fifth time we watched him reach for his flyers, his hand went a little too far, and caught on the large fan, that was attached to the back of his do-it-yourself flying machine. Instantly we see a burst of red as his fingers are sliced off by the blades. He starts screaming and loses control of the machine, violently jerking back and forth until he flies directly into the chain link fence of the football field. Teachers began to usher students into class under threat of expulsion and police showed up a few minutes later. The football team had to fan out shoulder to shoulder later that day to try to find the dude's severed fingers. Turns out crazy guy was a student's father. She never talked about it, and I haven't seen her since I graduated almost a decade ago. Still feel bad for her. About a month ago I was eating at a very nice sushi restaurant in my city, Austin, Texas, and I had to go to the bathroom. I got up and walked in at exactly the same time as a guy at a table across the room. We walked in and there was only one urinal, so I became him to go ahead as a kind gesture. He thanked me, and I leaned against the wall, and pulled out my phone to check messages, read it, and the guy looks at me over his shoulder, and says wanna see something weird. I think about it and say maybe, and he reaches his hands down his pants farther and fishes around for a second to pull out a live baby bunny. He then hands it to me, while still peeing and says here. I grabbed this rabbit and petted him, looking into his eyes thinking of so many different questions. How sanitary is your hand, when you handed him to me? Why do you have a rabbit in your pants? Or any other question, but for some reason my brain decided to ask. What's his name? The guy looked at me confused and said, Co or something, I don't remember we got him today. I responded with that's a good name for a bunny. Well, I think I'm going to eat him in a few days, they taste great. He replied, as he zipped his pants up, and started washing his hands. You shouldn't eat bunnies, you should love them, blurted out of my mouth. The guy looked back at me, like he was deep in thought, dried his hands on a towel, and said maybe I will. Then he smiled, took back the bunny, and placed it in his pants and walked out. I like to think I saved that bunny, but he probably ate it. I was riding the dart, Dallas public transportation, train back home from work, when I was 17. My first job, working at a Boston market my third uncle managed. Anyway, it's about 10.30 at night, and in my car, there are some odd characters. Business guy, with a coat folded over his briefcase in his lap. Obvious gangbanger guy, tattoos. Big hoodie, slouched in corner. Moderately hygienic homeless guy, two jackets, really messed up shoes, crazy hair, but perfect white teeth. Can't stop laughing to himself every few minutes, and white skater kids. Some with boards, others with rollerblades, one with BMX bike. I sat near the white kids. Suddenly, there's commotion at the front of the train. We are in the far back. Everyone peers down the aisle to see what's going on. Some tall, gangly black guys running down the aisle, throwing haymakers seemingly at random every few seats. He's rapidly approaching our section. Now that's weird, but what happens next is the icing on this crazy cake. Moderately hygienic homeless guy fumbles around his jackets and retrieves not one, but two switchblades. Snicks those fuckers out like Wolverine. Obvious gangbanger guy rears up to his full height, unfolding to something like 6 feet 6 inches, reaches into the front pocket of his hoodie, and suddenly the outline of a gun is clearly pressing. Me and the white kids, we just turtle up in the corner, barricaded behind a phalanx of boards. But business guy, he just gives a tired sigh, moves his coat to the seat next to him, 
This dude's briefcase is handcuffed to his wrist. He unlocks it, opens it, reaches in and just rests his free hand inside. Psycho Haymaker guy makes it to our section, stands bewildered for about 3 seconds, frantically taking in this situation, then turns around, and runs right back where he came from, punches another couple of people, then gets off the train. I started carrying a knife after that. I was in Rome walking down one of the main tourist streets, lots of high-end fashion stores, mid-July, lots of people and right in the middle of the street there's a big scaffolding erected against the side of one of the stores. As me and my family walk under the scaffold there's a big crowd of people ahead of us, so the pace is pretty slow. Out of nothing the people ahead of us start coughing, nothing noticeable at first but then it's louder, and it's spreading further back. My brother is a little bit ahead of me, and he's coughing too. I can suddenly feel dust or smoke or something obstructing my airway and I can barely breathe. The street looks fine, no building dust or smog or car exhausts, but around 30 people are coughing, like we are in a burning building and pushing each other to get out onto the street. The panic was huge, I couldn't stop coughing and all I can think of is getting me, and my family the hell out of there. People are shoving and shouting, and I can feel the crowd swelling against my back. And then we make it onto the street and it stops. All 30 or so of us just stood on the street coughing and spluttering and trying to catch our breath in the midday sun. And that was it. After about a minute we all felt fine and everybody walked away in different directions. No lasting effects. Nothing. There was probably a really simple explanation, but it was one of the weirdest experiences I've had. 5th grade. I forgot the details, because it was long ago, and it was stupid kid drama, but basically my entire gym class hated my gym teachers. One day, some kid confronts one of the teachers, and actual fight breaks out between the two of them. The rest of the class just goes apeshit. Some join in on the fighting, so in the matter of seconds it's a bunch of 10-11 year olds fighting two screaming adult females, and the rest of class takes it outside to the playground. Once outside, another group of students try to break some of the playing equipment, but everybody else for some unknown reason decided that marching around the perimeter of the playground while chanting was the best course of action. I just chilled out on top of the jungle gym outside while this was happening, since I didn't want to get in trouble. So basically, inside the gym you have a group of students wailing on two teachers for some period of time, and outside a bunch of kids are marching in circles acting like they are doing some kind of freedom march. Once the dust settled, every student was required to go to a counseling session, and that was the end of that. I don't remember what happened to the teachers or the actual class after that. This happened back in the 1999-2000 school year at Meadow Creek Elementary in Gamif. By some giant coincidence, anybody who went there and sees this post can confirm. My friend invited me to a party once. It was a party being held by some social network site, can't remember the name of it, only certain members got invited, mainly people who had helped contribute to the site and a big part of the community. They each received odd packages filled with items such as marshmallows and other things, and a personalized invitation. Also, each member could bring one guest. I was a guest. We traveled down to some warehouse in the middle of London and there is a massive queue, and being handed drinks by people who seem to work there. Anyway, once I get inside I can only describe this as the strangest, most absurd party I have ever been to, and it was awesome. At the entrance a dwarf leads you through a large wardrobe of coats, so you can't see, and you eventually enter a jungle with a massive tree with a tree house in the middle. Several free bars, you just had to jump on for a bit, and help serve people. A hot tub, and random caravans. Walk through and we found several different rooms, such as a cinema, slaughterhouse, granny flat, the white room. A room fully padded out, and filled with huge white cushions, and loads more I can't remember. I met some interesting people, got drunk, had an app and tree house, and woke up with another guy I had met early curled up next to me, and the rest of the room chatting, while two girls get it on in the middle. We left at about 11 in the morning, as did many others about that time, but apparently the party went on for another couple days. It was surreal, but incredible at the same time.
I was paying off a bushel of parking tickets when I was approached by a man dressed in a three-piece suit. He offered me $100 to be a witness for his wedding because his best man wasn't going to be able to make it. I said f yeah. Walk into the room and it was myself, a judge and two dudes. Was I surprised? Yes. I thought the best man was running late. Again. Wrong. Watch two dudes get married. Didn't bother me. Even made money. Went to bar afterwards to celebrate with them. Coolest dudes I have ever met. Got another parking ticket. Still friends today. Okay, finally a chance to share this one. I was in South Africa and planned to go out with a bunch of friends for someone's birthday. When we got to the restaurant, they told us there was a wait of like 20 minutes, but since the place was really small and we were a large group they told us to go wait in the bar next door. Sure, no problem, we'll grab a drink and then head over. So we go to the next door over and immediately think there must have been a mistake. The door seems to lead to nothing but a long, dark, narrow alley with a massive set of stairs at the end. No way the bar's up there. We go back and double check, but the hostess insists, yep, the bar's up those stairs. So we head over and start climbing. The stairs are extremely steep and very narrow, and there's mysterious water dripping down the sides of the alley. We're all getting a pretty weird vibe, but we continue on anyways. Eventually the stairs come up to a short hallway, and at the end of it is a door which looks like it leads to someone's house. It's the only way out of the hallway, though, so we open it and walk in. It was the most surreal experience of my life. It was like walking into a ritual worship of Britney Spears. There was a DJ at the front projecting the music video to hit me baby one more time onto the wall for a crowd of people all dancing along, like it was 1999. The room was probably 85% male and many of them had Britney Spears masks on their faces, so we didn't even know what people really looked like. After a few solid minutes of gaping in shock, my friends and I turned and hightailed it out of there. The weird thing was a few people arrived late to the restaurant, so obviously we shared the story and promised we'd take them up afterwards. So when the meal ended we climbed the long, narrow stairs again and walked into nothing. It was a completely regular bar. No traces of Britney anywhere. If you enjoy these videos please consider subscribing.